if Putin's invasion is efficient, if the Blitzkrieg, as it was planned, if it was truly a success as it was planned, say, in a week or two, I think all of us on the front line were absolutely scared. Slovakia is next in the line, so you can imagine how concerned we were. I think democracies in between each other are much more reliable partner than relying on dependency, and that counts on China. India to us is a credible partner. Mm. Uh, that is democracy. Uh, it, it's based on the same values. So I think uh, it, it's a truly good strategic partner. I see strength in democracy in India this is the largest world democracy and becoming the fifth economy in the world. I think we need to cooperate more because if I was choosing with whom I go on the same rope and have some level of dependency, I would always choose these kind of uh, relations uh, in these kind of countries like India. Hello and welcome to the Raisina Ideas Pod. My name is Garima Mohan. I'm from the German Marshall Fund. And today for a conversation um, with us, we have a very special guest. We have the Minister of Foreign and European Affairs of the Slovak Republic, His Excellency Minister Kacer. Welcome, sir. Thank you for joining us. Well, thank you for inviting me. Um, I wanted to have a conversation with you about um, European politics, particularly in the wake of the invasion of Ukraine. Mm. Um, I wanted to get a sense from you of how you want to engage with the Indo-Pacific, given the backdrop of the Ukraine conflict, if this region is as important still for you. Mm -hmm. And finally, I'll come to you to talk about your special message to India, since we are in New <laughs> Delhi right now. So, Minister, let's start with the broader question and talk about European politics. Um, since the ill-fated day and the invasion of Ukraine last year, we have seen a remarkable show of unity emerge in the European Union. Yeah. For the rest of us in the world, we've seen a more geopolitical union. Uh, we've seen um, great changes, not just in policy, but also discourse across the board. Some would say that it's Central Eastern European countries that are driving this change. Mm. Uh, and we've seen a lot of criticism of countries, for example, like Germany for being mm. too slow. Mm. Uh, what is your take on mm. the geopolitics as it is shaping up in the mm. EU currently? Well, if you rewind the movie <clears throat> a year ago in a couple of days, say if that was day uh, minus one from the attack, a lot of people still didn't believe at the time that this is going to happen. They said, no, 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 Russia is only threatening and uh, they are not going to attack. And if so, they are not going to attack full scale. Boom, that happened. Uh, next day fear was if Putin's invasion is efficient, if the Blitzkrieg, as it was planned, mm. so takeover of uh, the capital, TV, taking government of probably sitting in uh, a puppet government and invasion from the east, if it was truly a success as it was planned, say, in a week or two, I think all of us on the front line were absolutely scared. Mm. So we were thinking, oh Jesus, you know, if, if truly w Putin would use this Wunderwaffen, what they were always propagating, and we would see that mighty army storming across Ukraine, we are going to be next. Because propaganda was saying, we are not going to mm. stop in Kiev. Indeed. We are going for Berlin, mm. and we are going for Brussels, and we will stop at La Manche. Mm. Slovakia is next mm. in the line. So you can imagine how concerned we were. We were afraid that, uh, if he wasn't successful, Europe will not have time to unite and react, and we would be something like this was war in Crimea that, uh, well, you know, it would stay divided and nothing happened at the end. Good news was that uh, Ukraine was fighting extremely bravely and they were extremely efficient. It gave time to us to react, and I think uh, if there is um, a single surprise uh, from the first days, or first week rather, was how Europe was uniting quickly. Mm. And this was not only, you know, here I need to give a credit also uh, to our older uh, partners in the EU, that this was not only because we were paranoid and we would bombard them and we would pressure them. I think there was gradually paced up reaction, which was good. And on your direct question to Germany, you know, I probably we wouldn't be able to find too many people who before the attack would predict mm. that Germany would react in this way 
So those who say that Germany was slow, mm. I would say, come on, give me a break. You know, mm. I don't agree at all. Okay. I think Germany stretched the mile. Mm -hmm. We could not imagine before the war. Um, you know, you remember a debate around the Nord Stream. Yes. Uh, that was us and Americans, uh, mm. the, you mean the center, uh, center and Eastern Europe and Americans who were saying, Germans, don't do it. It will create strategic dependency. Russia is going to abuse. And uh, CDU governments, uh, Merkel was saying, no, 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 this is only business. There is no strategy, you know, this, this is no dangerous at all. Mm. And then uh, socialist and green, they were even against war more uh, than Christian Democrats. Mm. So expectations were dire. And now we have green foreign minister, Annalena Baerbock. Mm. Oh, she's the toughest cookie in yeah. all of the crowd in the Foreign Affairs Council, I can tell you. She's very pushy. She's very mm. pro-Ukraine support. So I think Germany is delivering very well, and uh, they are the engine. Um, I like their policy. Great. I, I guess our friends in Berlin would be very happy to hear this. I told them a couple assessment. of times. Then. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I want to ask you the lessons that are being learned from this invasion, a reckoning of Russia. You know, you mentioned Nord Stream. I think across the board in countries in Europe, there has been an awakening that. We've been too dependent on s in certain mm. sectors on Russia. You you have to be critical about these dependencies. Mm. Is the same lens being applied to China as well? Well, you you, you hit the nail on, and this is not only lesson uh, or for Central and Western Europe. This is global lesson. This is equal lesson to India. Mm -hmm. Well, for different reasons, probably we had dependencies on oil, gas in in Slovakia, also on nuclear fuel. We are a country which is producing nuclear power. Uh, soon we will be producing 80% of electricity uh, in nuclear power stations. So these were the dependencies. And there were a number of us saying before we should do something about diverging the sources. And probably it's not about the mix, but about uh, the energy sources and routes. So uh, the energy um, segment is not something which can be used as a hammer, but it's a normal commercial tool. If something is failing down, you can pick somebody else, et cetera, et cetera. But globally, uh, we saw, but we saw it even before the war. Uh, see, at COVID, uh, mm. uh, at COVID, uh, some routes collapsed, and uh, we got a great shortage of uh, semiconductors. We almost stopped uh, car production. Slovakia is by the way, one of the largest car producers in the world. So we felt it heavily. And the war gave additional lesson that uh, critical dependencies and strategic dependencies is no go. It is not to stop globalization, but think very carefully about your partners. And I spoke to um, my uh, a partner here, Minister Jashankar, already mm. in January in S3 format with Austrian and, and Czech colleague and me uh, precisely on this agenda. And he was complaining. He said, yes, our defense market with Russia collapsed, and now we have to do something about it, and we need to uh, think very carefully and very wisely. And here, countries like Slovakia can help. I brought now with me also defense industry delegation, mm. how we can fill in uh, and to be much more reliable partner than mm. Russia. I think democracies in between each other are much more reliable partner than relying on dependency. And that counts on China in particular because China is a partner. I don't think China will behave this stupidly like Russia. Mm. China needs European market. They don't need to crush European market. But to a large degree, their behavior in the future as an autocratic communist power, it's, it's quite unpredictable. India to us is a credible partner mm. uh, that is democracy. Uh, it, it's based on the same values. So I think uh, it, it's a truly good strategic partner. Great. I, I think your points would resonate really, really well with the audience here in Delhi. Um, there has been a lot of debate in India, conversations with India's Quad partners about uh, reducing dependence, uh, protecting critical um, industries, protecting supply chains, insulating them from these upheavals. Um, so I think in a way, um, the differences between Europe and India have reduced yes. in, in a lot of uh, senses. Yes. And you, you um, mentioned India already, uh, but I wanted to ask you more specifically, now that you're in New Delhi, what message do you have for your Indian partners? What is the vision that you would like for your you know, partnership with India? You mentioned defense cooperation. Um, perhaps also industrial cooperation. Um, you know, if you can give an idea to our audience, um, mm. just two or three points which are which make India an important partner for you. Uh, point number one: 
India is part of the same world where we want to belong, and this is the world which is based on rules, law, and principles. Uh, we created a Security Council in the United Nations after the World War II, so the atrocities of World War II would not repeat. And one of those principles is that you cannot change borders by force. All of us might have these issues that uh, you may have dispute whether Ukraine uh, always belonged to Russia. We always belong to somebody and somewhere else. So India here for us, it's an essential partner here in Asia, together with Japan and some other players uh, out of G20 and, and, and G7 uh, format uh, who are participating in these. Uh, who advocate and uh, on the same page as we are on a rules and law-based world. This is absolutely key. We want to be part of this with India and other strong partners. Second message, this is critical dependencies. Uh, we come here with some of the technological offers. So Slovakia has got a special hybrid offer because we still have knowledge of technologies used by Soviet Union and Russia then, so mm. we can help in maintenance, rehaul, and modernization of that technology which was bought, and we already phasing, uh, phasing out. But we also have a new modern technology of NATO uh, and modern European standards, of which we can bring uh, and build the joint ventures, uh, and even uh, try to uh, sell things on the market. Third markets not only help our own defense mm. and Indian defense. Third message, uh, probably as I mentioned uh, before, I see strength in democracy. In India, this is the largest world democracy and becoming the fifth economy in the world. I think we need to cooperate more because if I was choosing with whom I go on the same rope and have some level of dependency, I would always choose these kind of uh, relations uh, in these kind of countries like India. Excellent, That that's really useful. Thank you for being so detailed, particularly on the defense uh, cooperation, because this is really crucial for India at this juncture. I think it's also, I, I focus uh, on India-Europe relations, and I think it is a real asset for us to have uh, Minister Jay Shankar, who is so invested yes, absolutely. in the European partnership, has has had a history of you know postings oh, in yeah. Europe and, and work with Europe. And I really um, hope to see relations with the Central Eastern European countries and India grow, and I think uh, what you mentioned, particularly, you know, the dimension on on security, defense, but also uh, critical supply yeah. chains and, and industrial cooperation. There's a lot of potential. Absolutely. Um, so I'm very glad that you're here, Minister. I hope we'll see you back um, at another Raisina Dialogue. Thank you very much for taking the time and talking to us today. Thank you very much. I enjoyed very much so far the Raisina Dialogue and Chapeau down. It's very well done conference. Great. Thank you.